All right, so I have a friend with a PRS Sanzera, and he was having an issue with it. Um, come to find out, I guess the technical term for it is motorboating. So did some research, kind of mixed reviews online as to how to fix this motorboating issue, but um, here's what it sounded like. I just wanted to go with, I, wa I wanted to help him out. Here's the uh, PRS Sunzera. It's the 20 watt combo. Bought it about a year ago, he says. Uh, everything was working fine up until a certain point. Um, some people say that they had to replace capacitors inside the amp to get it fixed, like filter caps and other stuff. Other people had success with tubes. For me, I think the tubes is kind of like the first thing you do to troubleshoot it just to make sure it's not that. Um, I also want to check the bias on the app. So to check the bias, PRS actually gives you like a nice little port here. Uh, com is for common ground. There's bias one and two. So obviously this bias will be for the first tube. This bias will be for the next tube. Um, I wanted to check the bias and I also wanted to replace the original power tubes, which are these right here. They come stock with Ruby 606 GCs. Um, these came from the factory. They're about a year old. I noticed immediately, looking at this one, see that debris that's in the, the bottom? There's debris on the bottom. Uh, I can't get it to focus, but on the sides, you can also see like some debris. See that right there? Like, like a little snow globe in here. So that was the first indication that I knew that these tubes had to be replaced regardless. Uh, the next thing also that I noticed is that when I would tap on these tubes, they were microphonic, meaning the tap that I did to them, um, it would just get amplified and just continue building that, you know, through the speaker. And you would just constantly hear like, you know, that, that tap that I gave it just getting louder and louder and louder. So, yeah, I just wanted to change these tubes out. There's both of the tubes right here. So took them out. Um, I had a set of Mesa tubes. This one is a Coke bottle STR 420. This is an STR 454. Very awesome tube. Both of them. Very awesome new old stock vintage stuff. So anyways, I popped these in here and, uh, it fixed the issue. I'm going to show you right now um, what the bias looks like on them. I'm going to turn the amp on and show you that, you know, it's not making that motorboating sound again. So, you know, a happy ending here. I know that other people have had, you know, other experiences, but I just wanted to post my experience with, with this one in particular, because I feel like that's probably step one to do with troubleshooting. And if you're lucky, like, like, like we were here in this instance, you know, it's just a tube. So, um... Yeah, let me show you exactly uh, how to check the bias on it, how to adjust it, and uh, hopefully that'll get you started. Okay, so first things first, I got my voltmeter here. This, uh, any, any, really any voltmeter will, will work. This one's a blue point. Um, so the factory bias, based on the tech manual, uh, is 30 millivolts. It's biased to 30 millivolts from the factory. And when you're talking about bias, you're only talking about the power tubes, right? Um, so I have it set here to 2000 millivolts. This, this will read, you know, a small range. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power the amp on, leave it on standby. I want it to warm up a little bit before I do this. Tubes are lit. Can't really see it too well, but they're lit. Uh, I'm going to give it a few minutes and then I'm going to show you, uh, what the readings are from, you know, these bias settings. Um, another thing you're going to need is just a very, very small, like jeweler's uh, Phillips head to go inside here. And basically to adjust the bias, you're going to trim either clockwise or counterclockwise. Very, very small movements um, if, if need be, right? But this is just a test. 
so we'll see what happens. So on the last video, as soon as I flipped it on off the standby, it started motorboating. Let's see if it happens this time with the new tubes in there. It's on. No motorboating. Normal hissing. Right? Now in the last video, also, let me grab a, let's see, where did I need that thing? Here it is. I just took, you know, I just took this and basically what I was doing is I was tapping. See? On the old tubes when I did this, it basically amplified those taps into a, an insane level, just kept, you know, building on it. But, these tubes are not microphonic. So that's step one, which is pretty good. Like I said, the amp is on. So if you, you know, throw a guitar in there and throw a signal, it will play. Um, so far, no motorboating, right? So let's just check the bias out. Let me turn this guy on. All right, so all I'm gonna do here is you have your negative black ground, right? The red is what's going to feed you your numbers, so I'm just going to leave that into the common ground, right? Just like that. And then as soon as I put this guy in here, I should get a reading, and I'm at 36 millivolts, right? Factory spec, per the technical manual, is 30 millivolts, so we're only 6 millivolts out, which, not a big deal. Um, you know, just it, this is this is the factory bias, but you could bias it higher um, if you you know want to want to just run the tubes a little bit hotter. It will affect the tone. It will give you a you know it will it will change the playability. And some prefer them a little bit more warm. Uh, Thirty millivolts is rather cold, but you know the tubes will last longer. And you know just a couple millivolts here and there. So thirty six millivolts is not bad at all. I'm not even going to try to adjust that. Let's check the next one for the next tube. And you can see we're at 39. So it's only a three millivolt difference, right? Not a big deal. Not worth adjusting the bias, but I mean, if, if, I, if I did want to trim, trim it back, like I said, just a tiny little Phillips head in there, you can actually see it. And just, you know, adjust it clockwise or kind of clockwise, depending on how, how you want it. If you really want to get down to that 30 millivolt spec, but honestly, the six and the nine millivolt is not a big deal and running it a tad bit warmer is it's okay you know it, it'll make the tone a lot warmer um <laughs> maybe if that but anyways um so we're fine here you know no motorboating Th it, this is in this instance you know it was a, a happy ending with just having to replace the tubes which honestly you can get on Sweetwater a pair of power tubes like this I I'm gonna recommend to him to put in some groove tubes just because groove tubes are very reliable um, a pair of groove tubes will run you $60 that's taxed and shipped to your house. So for 60 bucks, you know, you, you avoid the cost of having to send it to a technician, you know? Um, so yeah, that, that's, that, that was my story basically on, on this. And, uh, hopefully this, this helped you guys out a little bit, at least on, on the quest, if you're going through, you know, that sort of thing. Hopefully this uh, helped you out a little bit, but um, I'm going to keep playing around with it. If the, if, uh, if the noise does come back, I will update. Um, if you don't see any, any further updates from me at this point, it's, it's probably, you know, not been an issue since. So, uh, all right, good luck. All right. So actually before I finish this video, I want to plug it in, not call it a, you know, a job well done unless I plug it in. So amp is still on, got it plugged in, uh, and let's just see what it sounds like. All right, I'm gonna, gonna hear it. I'll plug it into this, plug it into my ESP. All right, let's see, bear with me here. Bear with me real quick. Let me grab a pick. I think it's right behind here. Where's that? Here it is. All right, let's see. 
It's on the clean channel right now. Let's flip it off standby. Thank you. 